Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you've just con conveyed a message from His Excellency the President on the nomination of Professor Kiture Kindiki uh, to fill the vacancy of the Office of the Deputy President, uh, which occurred yesterday, uh, uh, to fill the vacancy of the Office of the Deputy President, which occurred yesterday following the conclusion of the impeachment proceedings at the Senate. Honorable Speaker, we are now here to vote on the nomination as required by the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, could you please guide the House on whether we are acting within the constitutional deadline? And is it in order for the nomination to happen today after receiving the notification from the President today? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. With those clarifications sought by members after the House business committee meeting. Honorable members, I will now uh, require the debut speaker to come to the chair and carry on with the proceedings. Members of the House business committee move to room nine for a meeting whereafter we will resume the proceedings of the House and I'll guide the issues raised by Honorable Pukose, Jen Gakiri, uh, Wangwe, and Omboko Milemba at the next resumption. Yes, uh, what's your point of order, Honorable? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to join my very good friend, uh, the Honorable Pukose. Uh, in seeking your direction, Mr. Speaker, with regard to Article 149 of the Constitution on the appointment of uh, and approval by a vote of the Deputy President. Ms. Order, Ms. Mr. Speaker, the words of the Constitution are very clear. Yes. It is appointment and vote. And vote. I approval is not used. Yes, not used, Mr. On Speaker. On this article. Mr. Speaker, you know. This constitution we are borrowed heavily from the U.S. Constitution. The 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which was passed in 1967, has a similar provision that provides that a deputy a vice president shall be appointed, shall be nominated by the president and vote, approved by a vote by the House. It, it uses the words confirmation, Mr. Speaker. Previously in the United States, Mr. Speaker, before the 25th Amendment, there was no similar provision. In fact, there was uh, in the past, before 1967, there was a cumulative of 37 years when there was no vice president, when one either passed away or one was appointed as the, became the president. And so, Mr. Speaker, we, we would like you to express yourself with regard to this issue. What is the threshold? On the removal of the deputy president is two-thirds. So is the approval or by vote of the deputy president two-thirds? Because it's not provided in the, in, in the Constitution. Honorable Chief Conga, yes. if you are paying attention, you are saying exactly what Bukose said. Oh, I'd and you are out. sitting next to him. No, no, I walked out, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I walked out. So, word so, for word, what you are asking me to oh, say. Yeah, you are stolen from me. Mr. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yes, Wamboka. DK, if you want to catch the speaker's eye, there's no provision for you to stand up. You sit, and <coughs> I'll give you. Yes, Wamboka, member for Bumula. Honorable Speaker. As you are aware, Article 118 of the Constitution requires this House to facilitate public participation in its legislative and other business of the House. Honorable Speaker, the issue of public participation is a sensitive matter which has often attracted debate and court challenges. Indeed, our recent experience in considering the special motion for removal of the Deputy President made us even appreciate better the need for public participation. Honorable Speaker, with this in mind, please guide this House on whether we shall be expected to conduct public participation in voting for the nomination 
to fill the vacancy in the office of the Deputy President. Thank you. DK. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sp uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising on a point of order, on, still on the same uh, issue that I need your guidance. Looking at His Excellency, the nominee, we just vetted not more than two months ago, and that implies not more than six months ago. And the questionnaire that is expe expected is still the questionnaire that we used. Why don't we use the same motion and we use the same output and we just put the motion and we put the question and we finish today? Thank you. Daud. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, it's great that uh, Honorable Kidore Kindiki has been nominated by the President. My question is, uh, Mr. Speaker, will, the, will IBC have to be involved as the same was done during the election, or it is not a factor in this case? While I congratulate uh, Kidore Kindiki for nomination. Donya, what is it? Uh, Mr. Speaker. On the same issue? Yeah, on the same issue. Go ahead. Uh, he's saying that we use the same questionnaire that he used as the interior for the position of the deputy president. He's incorrect because you cannot uh, use the, the, the same questions when it is a, a different uh, docket. He's out of order. Uh, Thank Mr. you for speaker. helping the speaker. <laughs> yes, member for Langata. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Having seen how things move very fast in this house, let me take this opportunity to congratulate the newly appointed deputy president. Order, Order Jalango. He has not been appointed. He has been nominated. I've just said on how things move very fast here, sir. <laughs> let me congratulate him. Let me be the first person to congratulate the newly elected deputy president. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You can come now. Eh? No, come and take the seat. Yes. Honorable members, we'll end this here. I'll make some reason the direction on those issues raised. I will now ask all members of the House Business Committee, Kainan and your team, to move to room nine for a meeting. And we'll, the debut speaker will go on with the statements. I had not given direction on the member for Moyale's statement. It's committed to the committee responsible and to bring a response in two weeks. members of this house Order, Honorable Pukose. to pass this motion. And are you jumping the gun? No, I'm just seeking your guidance, Honorable Speaker, okay, whether we need the same threshold in this case. Okay, go on. So, Honorable Speaker, is the same voting threshold applicable in this case? I, I seek your guidance following your you are communication still, from the Senate. You are still jumping the gun. Okay. We have a communication from the Senate which requires no comment. Okay. 
when I give the next message, that is when you will be able to seek that clarification. Thank you. You are guided. Hold your horses next. <laughs> Bet if you have no horse, hold your mule. <laughs> hold your mule. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. Order number five, papers. Yes. Order number six, notices of motion. Order number seven, questions and statements. Yes, uh, Honorable Wamboka. Uh, Honorable Speaker, yesterday you, you guided that uh, today morning the chairman of education committee was supposed to bring uh, a response with regard to opening of more university. Uh, kindly, I seek your indulgence, Honorable Chair, so that... Uh, Which chair? The chair Meli. Yes. So, Honorable Speaker, I seek your indulgence so that uh, we can have that university opened. Thank you. Honorable members, there are two chairmen I directed to bring preliminary statements this morning. Honorable Meli on Moi University, and I think Raso, did I also direct you to bring something? Let's start with Meli. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I stand here to respond to your direction yesterday that uh, indeed Mo University is in a crisis and as I submitted the statement from Honorable uh, Omboka on the issue of the university. However, Mr. Speaker, I received a, a response which is very inadequate and uh, it could not address the issues that Honorable Wamboka and this House demanded from the Ministry of Education and more importantly from the, the peers. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, it would be good that I, I, I redirected again that all the salient issues that were raised in the, in the statement be addressed because it was such a generality that it could not address those particular issues. So I decided not to read that particular statement and I took it back to the Minister. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Is it on the same issue? Yes, I wanted to go ahead. Yes. Mr. Speaker, the issue of uh, Mo University is a, da is a very serious issue and especially destroying the lives of our professionals and our, our, our professors who have done a great job in going to school to be able to uh, teach our, stu uh, our, our children. Mr. Speaker, we want the ministry to take serious, uh, seriously this matter because taking it lightly and yet we are talking about the lives of people who are working there. They have lost their pensions. They have lost their, they don't have an increment of salaries, and uh, they have been put on CRB. Almost all lecturers who took loans, the, the, the university is not paying. So we need that thing resolved as soon as possible, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. It is in the region of Northern Kenya. Reasons why us and regions of Kenya remain vulnerable to climate change effects despite numerous national plans, including a report on the implementation status of the Northern Kenya Development Plan. Finally, a detailed analysis of the audited impacts of initiatives aimed at cautioning Kenyans from the effects of the climate change with the specific attention to northern region, including timelines for implementation of sustainable solutions. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Uh, that falls under the which committee? Environment? 
Committee of uh, Agriculture and Livestock and uh, Regional Development. Honorable Mutunga, are you here? Do you have any response? Or, or do you want to say something about it? Madam Speaker, we can uh, promise to get a response in the next two weeks, soon after the, 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 the recess. Thank you. Honorable members, before we move to the next statement, Yes, I will come to the questions. What I want to do is before we continue with the statement, I mean the, the uh, answers to the statements,